right. Hey, all test test. Okay. Uh, hopping in fast here because I was slow. Uh, tables kind of iffy. Uh, opening pack. Uh, roof pilasters quite good, but childless is the best. Carpenter's parlor is the best miner generally, but sleeping quarters very strong, and I can get grain fields set up with childless and just run a three room game. Uh, Carpenter's Parlor can be really tough to use with Childless on your first room, so I think I'm taking Sleeping Quarter here, but I'm not sure it's correct. Uh, passing Carpenter's Parlor is bold, for sure. Uh, lots of good cards here, but Rammed Clay is the best, uh, but I like a lot of these. Um, Clay Hut Builder, Conjurer, Storehouse Keeper, all are good. Maybe I should have kept the Carpenter's Parlor and just gone for a Storehouse Keeper game with Carpenter's Parlor. I'm a big fan of that, but i probably just take the Conjure and don't use it as, like, even more grain source in case Childless just dies. I mean, Clay Hunt Builder could be a thing, but I don't have a real reason for it. Uh, peeking at these players. Whoops, that'll come for now. Stream announcements. Uh. Uh, I got that out. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, opponents. Xlord. Has not played much. Could be reasonably good. Could not be hard to say. Dino Dino. Hasn't played much. Could be reasonable. Could not be. Won a game with 39. That's not a great sign. Scored 32. Scored 41. Lost a lot to bubble. Did score 53 here. So, who knows? We'll see. And then Jack Jack. I think we've been watching him a bit on Lumen streams recently. He's played quite a bit and has some stuff to figure out still. But, uh... Did score 51 in this game with Dino Dino the other day, so... Even players that aren't great can occasionally have games that go together well, so we'll see. Hello, Rilo! Good morning. Or good afternoon. I don't know where you are. Who knows? Whatever. Whatever time it is. Whatever greeting is appropriate. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, the game plan here also on my third seat. So, actually, the little awkward thing is childless is really best if you could get three wood or reed stone food. But if I can't get either, it could be awkward. Uh, okay. Cards here are fine also. Mantelpiece can be pretty strong, obviously. So let's probably just take that and then... Small-scale farmer doesn't work with childless. You want to build in round three, ideally, so that's completely not an option. So it's probably conservator with Mantelpiece is a potential line. Just get to a stone house fast. I mean, scholar, if I'm going to go fast, stone house is an option, too. I'll go conservator. Probably, eh, probably not using any of that, but we'll see. The main game plan really is just kind of childless. Maybe set up some green fields, get to three family members fairly quick. Sleeping corner for our late growths. Rammed clay will let us fence early and easily. So yeah, just play kind of the three-room game. Hope for late growth on like yesterday. If we do get earlier growth, that's where maybe we still play Conjure as an extra grain source. Uh, earlier growth is going to make me sad about passing Carpenter's Parlor Roof Ballister is what I passed. So that's... I've definitely passed uh, some really good stuff. Really not sure I should have passed Carpenter's Parlor, but I did it. So that's where we're at. Uh, this draft's going pretty slow. I mean, not like the first round wasn't slow on my part, to be fair. Like, <laughs> I I didn't pay attention to the game started, and so that it took me a while. Uh, but, you know. Whatever.
do do do. Um. Yeah, I don't even fully remember the other packs either at this point because it's just been a little slow and I've been doing streaming stuff. Ooh. Okay, here's some cards. Well, mostly just Sheepwalker excited me, but I don't really know if I'm going to be able to use Sheepwalker this game, but the rest of this is not very good. I mean, Carpenter is possibly playable with Childless, but I'll take Sheepwalker, and then the rest of these are pretty bad. I guess it's Claypipe. Pretty unlikely to actually play Dutch Windmill. Quite unlikely to play Brook. So I'll take Claypipe. And also, sorry, Market Stall is just garbage. I mean, I guess I could mark. I maybe it is market stall. God, is it possibly market stall? I take all grain with childless, get a bunch of it into the ground, and then late game I just play market stall. On three family members, clay pipe's not likely to do a lot. Can't believe I'm taking market stall though. It's very dubious. It's very questionable that this is possibly correct. Actually, it's super dubious. I've, I've talked myself into a, a dumb line. Just take the clay pipe. Sheepwalker also has a veg out. Like I, sh I, I, have, I have so many opportunities to get veggies by not giving up a crop in order to get them. Market stall's cost is just too high to be good. Okay, do, do, do. whoops. All right. This game, hopefully, will go a little faster once we're playing it. Still hoping that my opponents want to play Ox early so I can get three wood in round one. Three wood and one read is by far the safest opening. Um, I guess I just take Lumber Mill here. It's a lot of stone cost, but I'm clearly never playing Large Greenhouse. I don't intend to play Corn Scoop. I'm getting my crops other ways. I'm not going to be the last one to have a room, so Oven Firing Boy might make the team here. Hey, Heroic Logic. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, anyhow, yeah, I want to take three wood, one reed round one. And then round two, I would love reedstone food and two wood. Just classic kind of open childless easily. But we'll see. We're third seat. It's not guaranteed we're going to get to open an easy childless. Uh, if I'm forced onto awk in round one, I will awk. Uh, I, can, you, I can afford, like, not that it's likely to go great, but I can try to... Ock Childless into take one read or something. Um, Clay Hunt Builder comes back. Clay Hunt Builder's playable. Shifting Cultivation's very playable also. Uh, if you get enough food with Childless, it can be really nice to grow with Shifting Cultivation and then take a sow action right away. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. I shouldn't need Clearing Spade. Uh, I should have plenty of crops and not enough fields. Uh, is the more likely outcome so we're hoping for three wood here though three woods the cleanest way to open you were just dreaming you were playing agricola awesome that sounds like a good dream early tutor that's fine people can play ox i don't care people are going to play ox that's fine uh here it's a little awkward uh small scale farm is going to play that's fine i'm going to take the three wood but uh i did pass a carpenter's parlor and i know i passed a carpenter's parlor so, uh, handing the Carpenter's Parlor player Reedstone food is, uh, not good. Not good. I've, uh, I've definitely handed Teal the potential for a very good game. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how much that comes to bite me. Uh, I take two wood or one reed here, uh, whichever, don't really care. Well, actually, I do care. I'd rather take one reed here. I, I like to play it safe. Um, although if start player happens... I might greed out two wood. Okay, but it doesn't happen, so I just take one read. Just safe, safe, standard childless opening here. Next round, I should at the very worst get two wood, one read into childless build room. And that's fine. It's a good, strong opening with childless. Uh, I would prefer reed stone food. My hand has quite a few stone costs between mantelpiece, lumber mill, and I kind of want to run out of stone, and I kind of want to uh, build a clay oven probably. So my feeding basically my my feeding goal is to basically plow some fields, plant grain, 
make it a clown and I'm willing to I'm willing to just build a hearth and eat animals if like that opportunity is left to me and I can't somebody else is gonna oven. There is a storehouse keeper, so somebody could have some grain support. I took the conjurer though, so I'm not sure how much other grain support there is. Uh so I'm not sure how many people are gonna be fighting ovens on me, but we'll see. Uh, I'd love reedstone food this round uh, into two wood. There's a chance that happens because nobody took reedstone food last round, but you never know because some people, some people switch it up. They needed to rush out that tutor so they could not awk again is what Red's doing. Like, this is where I don't, like, don't play tutor first action of the game if you don't have more ox you're going to play here. Like, yeah, why are you taking reedstone food this round? Like, open the game with reedstone food. Like, that's, I think that's really, like, it's it's pretty inefficient from Red, in my opinion. Like, you don't take the best action in round one, presumably because you're going to rush a bunch of ox, and then you're not going to play a bunch of ox. I mean, I guess they're betting that they're just going to wheel an ox. Well, they're not going to wheel an ox here, though, probably. I mean, they could, but I wouldn't bet on it. I might just play free childless here, actually, myself, and then take two wood. Uh, two wood's a little risky. I guess I would have to take one reed. Yeah, I don't really want to take two wood, one reed. It's just, ugh, it's gross. But if I have to, I have to. Hey, good morning, Drage. Okay, I will take three wood into one reed. Uh, Lutinus is getting played. That's fine. I'm probably just not playing Conjure, but whatever. Anyhow, I take three wood here, and uh, then I'll just take one read. The fact that I'm taking one read actions at least kind of annoys the Carpenter's Parlor player. Um, it's going to be hard for the Carpenter's Parlor player to get a bunch of read. I don't remember Brushwood Collector. I don't know of a Harpooner. Now, they could have first picked Harpooner, but... Anyhow, yeah, good morning, Dranged. Uh, I passed a Carpenter's Parlor plus Roof Baluster to Teal. So, presumably Teal has that. Uh, so, that part's gross. But uh, the good news is... I should have a pretty easy childless here. In third seat, you once took reedstone food instead of two wood. Feels real bad if you see both of those two wood actions go. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's def. I mean, there's stuff. I would have taken reedstone food this round if I could have, though. I, I definitely would have taken reedstone food here if I could have. I have a lot of stone in my hand, and I think I'll get two wood back, but it's really not guaranteed. But major flipped, so like, in my opinion, red is better off just building a fireplace. Uh, red might get ock there. Teal's thinking a lot about this. I thought Teal would just ock something, but I guess I don't know. Well, I passed Teal a storehouse keeper. I would, if I'm Teal, I'm ocking a storehouse keeper on a big family plan where I have a carpenter's parlor and I really want to hit Reedstone food. But Teal's just gonna take two wood. Yeah. Well, good, good for red that they wheel ock. I mean, it's pretty strong. Red's just going to build the fireplace anyhow, though. Wow. And then Purple's not even going to want to play an Ock here. So this is where I could play Childless and get greedy. But I could easily get Reed blocked next round if I do that. So... I, especially because Teal can start player Carpenter's Parlor. Red's apparently not going to play an Ock Dredge. Yeah, I mean, Red's not a good player is what I'm learning. Like, I think Red's lost a lot of efficiency with this opening compared to where he could be. Like, playing Tutor makes no sense if you're not going to actually take advantage of Aking early. Like, open, like he should just have another Reedstone food action. Oh, wow. Purple's going to start player, though. Okay, well, Purple's start player and completely change the math. I guaranteedly get a read action at the start of next round now. So now I do play Childless here uh, because I might get a Reedstone food action instead of... Or I get two read, probably, instead of uh, just taking a one read action. So that's just clearly better here. Um, I don't get free Ock, but that's fine. Especially if I get Reedstone food. It's still like an extra stone or an extra reed I'm going to get here. Um, so yeah. Jock Jock has a Moldmore Plow, though. That's nice. I mean, that's... Although Jock Jock has, like, no room parts. I mean, this is the other problem with red and purple right now. Red and purple have no room parts, and they're not setting up. I am a big fan of the only other person that's setting up room parts is after me. So, like, that's the Carpenter's Parlor player. And even if he gets rooms, like, red or purple potentially start player for me anyhow, and I just get first growth pretty easily. Anyhow, I, I do prefer reedstone food to two reed. 
But obviously, I just take whichever I'm actually offered, and then I build a room second action. We're getting late sheep this game, so food's pretty tight. Uh, people should be taking three food. As I was say, purple might actually fish here, and I think that's the right move because with lootnist you can't take traveling, so you want to force somebody else onto that. Uh, but yeah, we got a redstone food here. This is a pretty damn good opening already for me. I've wound up with one extra wood. I did wind up with a stone action. I'm still getting round three childless. Uh, Teal should snap to read here, assuming they have Carpenter's Parlor, and I'd be shocked if they don't. Uh, I would, yeah, this is like the easiest to read, I would think. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I build my room, I take grain food, and then we see Teal does take the two read, as expected. I mean, Teal's not that far away from double building, but... Uh, three wood to red, that makes sense. Probably four clay here for Jock Jock. Maybe an Ock. I don't know. <laughs> red still not playing an occupation is kind of funny. Uh, we think Teal has two read because I picked Sleeping Corner over... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 uh, I did pick Sleeping Corner over Carpenter's Parlor. Um... I wasn't sure what I should do, right? Like, that was a really tough hand. Because it's kind of like, do I take Carpenter's Parlor and just build my room with Childless and then later build more rooms? Or do I just take the Sleeping Corner, have easy grain fields, and just play a good three-room game and grow late? But it was tough because I was also passing Roof Baluster. So, like, I passed a Roof Baluster Sleeping Corner. Or not, uh, not Sleeping Corner. Roof Baluster Carpenter's Parlor to the player after me, which is obviously like really good, strong second picks. Um, I'm fortunate that all my opponents here are a bit weaker, so that, you know, that hopefully will help me, but um, yeah, it's still it's still scary. Like, I'm, I'm expecting Teal to start player Carpenter's Parlor here into like four wood or Reedstone food or something. Um, And, and maybe I should have taken Carpenter's Parlor myself. I could have done Carpenter's... I, if I took Carpenter's Parlor, I could have done a round four... It turns out I could have done, like, a round four room with Carpenter's Parlor. And maybe that trade's worth it. But Teal hasn't done anything too bad yet. It just looks like there is all the fourth. Yeah, no, I think... I, I mean, honestly, Teal's position looks second best to me, knowing he has Carpenter's Parlor in hand. I'm not sure I'd take three food there as Teal, but I guess it puts interesting food pressure on the table. Um... I would have started with the Carpenter's Parlor there for Teal, I think, into Reedstone Food. I think that's pretty strong for Teal. None of his opponents are setting up room parts, so I would have just angled for setting up the double build, but that's fine. He'll probably just start player next round, which is less ideal, but uh, I would like Reedstone Food this next round just because my food is also a little iffy. Plowing is always welcome with Childless, so it, I might just plow. Uh, I don't have an extra food. Otherwise, I would debate dropping Conjurer still this game. I don't hate playing Conjurer. Uh, I really have no Ock requirements in my miners, so that's that's really good because I don't want I don't want Ock requirements in my miners. Animal Dealer for Red. That's fine. Red's presumably is going to take the sheep last action next round, which fine. So we're about to see four wood, three wood. Oh, Red on does that. I actually think Animal Dealer is good for Red. Red should start awking. But yeah, Plow Town Dredge. I agree. I think it's going to be plowing next round as well. But I think I... Assuming that Red doesn't take start here, I think I open Reedstone Food or Four Wood. Maybe I take Four Clay otherwise too, actually, and set up for the Clay Oven still. Take Four Clay and just plow. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely want to start plowing. I, I want to get a couple fields set up for a big sow. I, I want to get at least two grain fields by the end of stage two. Uh, I really just want to feed off that. But reedstone food's pretty strong for my hand. I also, like, I have good uses for stone. Not that this... Not that this lumber mill does me much, but yeah, I think I take reedstone food here anyhow, too. It, I don't really want Teal to have... I don't want to make Teal's double build too easy.
Uh, I might take four clay on the wheel instead of plow. I'm not sure. Or I guess next round I should just get four clay anyhow. Clay's piling up. Teal does take more wood, which makes sense. I mean, Teal still might just start playing to read stone food into double build. I mean, really just nobody else is ready with room parts. Red's just taking the sheep like they have to in order to feed. It's fine. I don't, I mean, Red didn't need to take sheep first action, but. Uh, I think I do take four clay here, though. Oh, Jock Jock also needs food. I missed that. That's awkward. Jock Jock's going to build a hearth and eat the veg that he bought off Lutenist. Okay, that's fine. All right, so the question is plowing or four versus four clay. I think I actually take four clay here because I might take four clay again next round and then be able to reno clay oven. And then possibly even play a clay hunt builder with rammed clay or something. Like, I think there's actually a lot of... And four clay is just like four wood for me. But it's also feeding. Like, I eventually need the clay action. I, I'd like the plow actions too, but it's not as important as making sure I get a clay action. One way my game definitely goes wrong is if I get into too much food trouble. Yeah, it's not. It, yeah, I think there's a good chance I get another four clay action, and then I have yeah options to reno with a clay oven, play clay hut builder type stuff. Possibly drop the mantelpiece on growth or something at that point. Teal takes a single read. Okay, so Teal's. I mean, Teal wants another read. Sure, that does indicate Teal has carpenter's parlor, but Teal should have start player into carpenter's parlor. Like that's just much stronger than taking a single read. You start player in the Carpenter's Parlor and then take Reedstone Food to open next round. Like Taking a single read action is not particularly good. It's coming from the man that took a single read action this game, but single read with Childless is much more defensible because essentially what single read is for Childless is it helps you get Childless out one more round. So it's really like taking... like That read action for me was to make sure I could build a room in round three, so it was really like a... It was like a reed grain food action for me, right? A reed grain food action is pretty good. Just a reed is pretty bad. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to take another grain food. As discussed, I just want lots of grain. Growth doesn't flip, nor does reno. But hey, we don't. We didn't want to see growth, so that part's good. I I, I like I like later growth. Uh, I do think I still want four clay here is my priority. This round being four clay and plow or four clay. I guess I could four clay and clay oven, and then I could red mantle piece. That's also an okay line, but I would like to start getting some fields. I'd like to be able to sow two fields. Getting two grain fields is just really good. Reedstone food makes a lot of sense for red, although red also doesn't have stuff. There's no two read action for jock jock, so yeah, the room queue is just ridiculous. Teal's probably is going to start player into build, so actually, if growth flips in six, I'm kind of screwed. Unless this is brushwood collector for jock jock, which it could be, and it is. Okay, yeah, players love their brushwood collector. So jock jock's actually going to get first growth now. Because Teal, Teal, Teal really is messed up by not playing the Carpenter's Parlor. Because somebody else is going to build in front of Teal now. But anyhow, I take four clay here. Um, so it looks like my childless is going to last for quite a while. Because I'm not going to fight for the growth queue. I'm going to wait for it to come to me, probably. And Teal is going to start playing the Carpenter's Parlor here. Yeah, there it finally is. But it's too late because Jock Jock's going to build. At least I think Jock Jock's going to build. To be fair, Jock Jock might not build because um, small scale farmer, Jock Jock might just be angling for the double build. Yep, Jock Jock's going to go for the double build. So Teal's going to get the double build here. So we're really hoping growth doesn't flip because it's gross if it does. But I'm just going to plow. Like, I'm not, I can't room block. So Teal does still get the next two rooms, which is kind of crazy. 
Uh, but that's okay. We're we're playing a game with some wildness. Teal might still get to grow first, which is nice. Really hoping for late growth, though. Late growth is just beautiful. If it is late growth, I actually will probably start player to grow first. Um, I could I could conceivably start player shifting cultivation. And then renovate clay oven, and then grow like clay pipe into a so bake. Be pretty good, but growth does flip. It's a bummer. Well, teal's gonna grow. I'm gonna just keep taking grain because again, the plan is to sow some. Wait, teal didn't build. Oh, wait a second. I am growing. Wow. Uh, wait, teal didn't build. What did teal do? Teal played adoptive. Uh, okay. So I guess I am just growing for free this round. Uh, it's still just going to be grain. Sowing grain is just so much better than the alternative. Uh, but yeah, I'm growing here. And I guess I do. I, I grow shifting cultivation, which helps speed up my sowing plan. So I will rend the clay oven next round. And then sow bake. But I won't have anything to bake. That's the one kind of sadness. But... Uh, oh no, I don't have anything to bake. Like, oh, I'll survive. <laughs> I guess I could even sow this round, to be honest. I might. Yeah, actually, that might. I might grow into sow and then red the clay oven next round. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not having other bake actions this game is going to mean feeding off the clay ovens a little iffy, but growing first is going to be pretty damn good, as it always is. Jock Jock might even start player to build next, because now Red can finally build. No, Jack Jack's just gonna take more wood. Okay, that's fine. Uh I grow. Growing is good. Play that shifting cultivation. Uh alright. Well, this is this is this is kind of the dream with childless. Like you just grow with zero effort. All your opponents are now going to have to scramble and fight for growth. I got crops, which is going to help my long-term feeding because I'm going to plant them here. I would really love three stone next round if I could. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but three stone next round to have a stone oven option for later will be nice. Because uh, my food isn't going to last forever. Oh, this is actually an oven firing boy game. Now that I'm thinking about it, though. I sow two grain fields here and have a clay oven, and then oven firing boy actually can be how I get my extra bake actions. Yeah, it might actually be an oven firing boy game. Which is kind of wild. Uh, everybody's food sucks, by the way. Uh, I was just noticing that. Jock Jock has no food and doesn't want to take loot mist, but might have, to, or not traveling, but Jock Jock might have to take traveling. Jock Jock probably should just read stone food here, but I guess he won't because of brushwood. I yeah, I mean this is part of why brushwood's not very good either. <laughs> Forced you not take the best action. This adoptive parents looks kind of questionable too for Teal. Like I don't know if Teal can afford to adopt, but Jock Jock's playing an Ock, which is a wall builder. Yeah. Also, Jock Jock's so hungry. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm probably not getting three stone next round then, which is only slightly sad, but that's okay. I sow here. Nobody else can run on me. Nobody can clay oven on me, so I'll be fine. No need to start player when I can just get a strong sow action out of the way. Uh, I potentially red clay oven and start player mantle piece because they're probably going to leave me six wood or six clay just because I don't think they have enough. Like, this table needs to take some food. They need to build rooms. They need to grow. I guess Teal could try to start player into grow here and then grow again. That might happen, which would be a bit gross. Uh, do I want to play mantle piece this game? I think the answer is yes. I don't really want to rend a stone for any reason. I mean, I have Conservator, so I could try to just not rend to clay, but I'm just renovating to clay here. And then dropping Mantlepiece and Start Player is, seems pretty good. Rend Clay Oven, Start Player, Mantlepiece. And then still take three stone if I'm allowed to. If I'm not, 
my food's a little awkward because I actually can't play an occupation. Like, I can't afford to play. Oh, I'm also last here. I actually might be allowed to play Conjure and take Traveling. It seems unlikely, though. I think Jock Jock has to take Traveling, but... I'd be pretty happy uh, to play Conjure here and do that line too. Getting a little more grain is not bad at all for me still. Because that grain of those, the grain of the fields is only going to last so long. It'll help a lot, but uh, Teal's going to open the three reed, which is like fine. Red should build a room in front of Jock Jock. And then Teal's going to grow. So then Jock... I might get the three stones still. Yeah, because Red is going to build here. So Jock Jock probably takes four food. So then I will just take three stone. I'm happy to lumber mill, build well, just whatever else. Stone oven, like, lots of options for me that are good. I think Jock Jock might have to take four food here. I really don't know what his plans are if he doesn't. Yeah, okay, and he does, so. It's fine by me. I get the three stone. I still think I probably do get to... I, th I think I take three stone, I just read the clay oven, and then I start player into six wood or a pile of clay, and we figure things out further from there. But, I mean, this looks, this looks very... This looks pretty winning to me. I get all oh, red might start player here actually. So whoops, I might not get start player. Uh, duh duh duh. I, I'll, I'll, I'm never getting start player here, right? Because um, red has to start player in order to grow next. Because teal has two rooms. So yeah, red actually has to start to grow. But red has to grow first. So I probably still do get six wood or six clay if I don't touch anything. So this might just be red clay oven and build the well. I might just do both here. And then I still can just start player mantelpiece next round or something if I want to. Oh, well, actually, I probably can't start player mantelpiece because teal is likely going to start player for the next growth. It probably... Yeah, that sucks, actually. I don't like that either, but can't do anything about it. Oh, wait, Teal hasn't paid for Adoptive yet either. Duh, Teal has another action here. Although Teal, oh, Teal can't, oh, uh, yeah, this is funny. Teal, Teal's in that awkward spot where Adoptive actually hasn't helped him at all. Because if he pays to Adopt, then his only action he can take is Day Laborer. So it does like, it, it's not even worth paying. Like, you literally don't get ahead. Um, so... This game's very food tight. I'm I'm really happy about my clay oven plan. I'm pretty happy about building the well this round as an option. Like these players have not figured out food. It's late sheep. Nobody's really played ox that help with food. I mean Red's animal dealer, I guess, does. But I guess wall builder technically is a bit more food in the game. But yeah, Red is gonna start for the growth. Which is the right move, so that's good. I think I am just going to red mantle piece and build the well. I think I'm just going to do both. Or not mantle piece, sorry. Red clay oven, build the well. I think I just do both of those things here. The well food is actually pretty slick because it allows me to play uh, oven firing boy, which I actually kind of need to get down. Because my feeding is only going to work if I can keep baking, and I really don't want to have to... Well, I guess actually another option for me next round is to plow and sow bake again. Get one more grain field and get one more bake. Maybe maybe I don't need oven firing boy yet. My next round could be like take the big wood or clay stack and then plow and sow bake again. That's pretty good. It's actually probably what I should do. I don't intend to build another room this game. It looks like Jock Jock's going to build too many rooms. The growth queue's a mess. Again, my game is real beautiful with just setting up a beautiful farm. Uh, so yeah, Jock Jock plows here. It's, it's good. I like Jock Jock plowing here because it, yeah, it means the resource stacks are going to be big. And I, I want the resource stacks to be big next round. I don't want to mess with them. Uh, we red and clay oven. Get that bake action that we need. 
that were fed for this harvest, which is important, and then I will just drop, oh, I'm going to drop the well, but Teal could adopt here into day labor. Go for it. Um, it's fine by me. I'm probably not going to play Clay Hunt Builder this game. Like, I, I realize I could play, like, well, Teal is going to pay for adoptive. I, they just have to day labor, but I guess they block day labor at least from me. So there's, I guess you may as well pay for it, but yeah, that's what they do. It's fine. I uh, will just build the well. Get some extra food as well, which is good. And then I presume I get six wood or six clay. I mean, it, red could just open six wood because sometimes bad players don't understand that they should grow over taking a resource stack. So I could wind up with only four wood or four clay, but I'll survive if that happens. I mean, it's going to be great for teal if people let him get away with that. I, I think red will understand they should just grow. Yeah, okay. But you never know for sure. But all right, I take six wood or six clay. doesn't matter. They're the same to me. With rammed clay. Now, admittedly, I haven't played rammed clay, so I guess six wood still is just better. But uh, I'm not totally sure I'm playing mantelpiece this game yet either. Teal might, like purple might, purple could just build here. But now purple's gonna take the wood. Okay, it's good. It's fine. I will take the clay. I'm not sure teal can afford to start player into grow. I mean, the food is really bad. Boar at least flip here. I mean, that's a big help, but. I'm still pretty happy to start player mantelpiece this round. It's a three-point mantelpiece. Uh, just taking a three-point action and getting start player is reasonable. It's not that important, though, I guess. Plowing and sowing is still really good. Four wood and four clay are also totally good. So, yeah, I probably am actually just going to ignore mantelpiece. I keep doing this with mantelpiece. I, I draft mantelpiece, and, like, it's it's a good card, but I'm, I'm increasingly souring on it. Like, I just... I don't know. Yeah, like, it's fine, but do I have time? Teal's also decided if they have time to take four wood. I mean, Teal might have to take four clay in order to yeah, build a fireplace. Uh, Teal, Teal's feeding is going to kill them this game. They, they, they're just, there's no food for them. They're going to die, like, almost certainly. Red takes redstone food. It's fine by me. I, I don't know how Red... Well, Red's going to feed by taking animals, but... Jock Jock's going to build rooms here, so I do have a four wood action I could take. Probably should take four wood, right? I mean, four wood's a strong action. It's hard to turn that down. Jock Jock's building a million rooms, which does make the wood pressure a bit higher again, too. I was expecting Jock Jock to do that, though. Uh, Teal probably will feel compelled to try to start player for the next growth. Am I happy being last next round? I think the answer is yes. I try to just take four wood and plow this round. I don't think Teal can afford to worry about plowing here. Um, Teal has food issues. Teal probably actually just has to build fireplace and take the sheep here. So maybe can't even start player to grow. Uh, but I'm going to take four wood and then try to plow. And then next round, I'll try to sow bake again. Teal is going to star player, though. Wow. I mean, I'm curious how they're going to feed. Butter churn uh, does not answer that question. <laughs> Teal might have to open the three sheep. Uh, or is just not realizing that they're going to starve. Uh, that's fine by me, too. Uh, currently, nobody can so bake. So that's pretty welcome. I just plow again. I mean, my game's looking pretty good, right? Just a classic three-room game here where I just get farming done while everybody else is struggling to grow. The only downside is that the animals are not great. Yeah, Teal does build a fireplace here. I think Teal has to open the sheep. If Teal doesn't open the sheep, Jock Jock and Red are going to take the animals. Classic game. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for chatting. Good morning. Yeah, it's, I mean, classics may be a stretch, but this is just like a three-room family game where you just, you, you manage to build early, you get the first growth, everybody else kills themselves for food and growth, and I just accelerate out of it with clean feeding and good farming. You have zero idea what's going on? Oh, okay. Well, welcome. Thanks for the comment. Anyhow, it's fun. We're playing Agricola on BGA. It's a good game, but yeah, it's... 
There's a lot going on. Anyhow, Red takes food as expected. Jock Jock's going to snag those boar because he has to, and then Teal's going to starve. Yeah. I, this was very foreseeable, in my opinion, but, you know, this is... I mean, I guess it takes a while, right? It does take some skill to realize these things are happening, but Teal is so screwed here. Teal's going to have to take fishing and then take day laborer. I mean, Teal's just dead. Uh, I take four wood. Nobody can so bake still, so just keep taking the biggest stacks. I'd like to fence in round 10, because the animals should be at singles, so I might be able to get double animals at 11, even though everybody's still going to need them to feed. But uh, so bake definitely comes back to me here, so that's good. Teal really blew it this game. Teal... Teal blew it for sure. Teal's going to starve, and starving is a lot of lost points. Uh, Teal def Teal had to open three sheep there. I, the other thing is Jock Jock had no food, right? Like, Jock Jock, Jock Jock couldn't afford to grow either. Teal did not need to grow first action because the only other person that could grow was Jock Jock, and Jock Jock couldn't afford to grow either because Jock Jock would starve. So Teal just had to open three sheep there and just didn't and is going to suffer for it, but... Uh, anyhow, I'm going to so bake, and then I might be able to start player to six wood, too. I'm not sh No, nah, red will take three wood, but <laughs> without food, you can't grow. That's a given. Indeed, you're correct. See, you're already learning. You're already learning things. It's, yeah, it's just obvious. You know what's going on. Jock Jock's at least getting his mold board plows out of the way, which is good. Uh, I'm glad I got the field when I wanted it. As I said, I'm going to so bake here, just make sure I feed. Oof, get that feeding aid. Boop. Fed. Uh, I do think I start player clan bankman here, anyhow. Not clan bankman. Got well, actually, clan bankman's not terrible for me. Uh, I start player rammed clay here so I can fence. Jock Jock's probably seeing the writing on the wall. Uh, I mean, this game's already won by me, to be honest. All my opponents are too far behind. There's none of them are catching up to me. It's it is pretty over. Uh I think I start player here into hopefully three stone. Uh if I can get three stone at the start of next round, I can actually stone oven, so I don't have to keep baking. I can then fence. Yeah, this looks pretty good for me. Like, actually, it is. It's just very good for me. I start player Rammed Clay. Hopefully take three stone. and can build a stone oven. I still have Sleeping Corner for later, which is nice. Wow, Teal pays for Adoptive here just to day labor again. Uh, I mean, Teal's still going to beg too. Now Teal just undoes it. I mean, there's no point in blocking day labor, but yeah, they just pass. Uh, red does take three wood. That's fine. Not a strong play in your estimation. Yeah. Uh, all right. I will drop rammed clay. Now we can fence with our clay. And then I'm going to open three stone next round. I guess I still could have played the two-point mantelpiece there, but I think I just need to get the rammed clay out. So I'm just going to keep ignoring mantelpiece, which is kind of wild, but I really just don't have time for mantelpiece. All these other things are just too good for me. I think I'm just going to fence six spaces and leave myself open for more plowing too. Oof, cow flips, that's ideal. Every animal is at one. It's a really strong round to fence in. Uh, so I'm glad that my plan is to fence this round. Uh, it works out real conveniently. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to pick up animal pairs uh, next round. Uh, just have a bunch of breeding animals on my farm. It's good stuff. It's very good stuff. Who needs battle piece anyhow? I mean, I agree. Um, I, I just 
I don't know. I, I keep drafting. Uh, there's certainly some games I've had where Mantlepiece is great. So I, I, I still draft Mantlepiece highly because it clearly can be good. But I just think people, like, I, I, I think people try to force it too often. Like, I, I actually think my game's been better here without playing Mantlepiece, which maybe is a little wild because I renovated round seven. But I just, I'm fencing out. I am fencing out, but I have 17 fence pieces, right, deranged? I have eight and nine, which is fantastic. I, I need one clay for the stone oven, and I need one wood for sleeping corner. My resources are perfect here. Uh, oh, stone oven is threatened. Uh, that's a little awkward, because I could get fencing blocked, but I need to build a stone oven here. But anyhow, I, I have the perfect resources. Oh, it looked like a six. I gotcha. No, I actually have the perfect resources. I have eight and nine, so... Uh, now it's eight and eight. Uh, so yeah, I get to keep one. Uh, I'm baking all three grain here just so that I don't have to keep taking so bake actions. I have just enough grain coming out of the ground to be able to resow it. Uh, so my feeding is really clean here for a few rounds now with that stone oven play. And then I expect to still get fencing back, but it's not crazy for like, well, Jock Jock played animal tamer. Oh, I missed that. I was going to say, it's not crazy for Jock Jock to fence, but Jock Jock's also going to be fighting me for these animal pairs. Uh, we hope nobody start players, because I, I would love to just stay start here. But if somebody start players, like in particular Teal, uh, I might not get any animals, because all my opponents are trying to eat the animals. Which is part of why fencing here is quite strong, because if I do get to take animal pairs, it not only is great points for me, but it denies like the best food on the table to my opponents. So it's very... It's pretty nasty. Uh, it does look like Red was going to build Stone Oven here just for points, possibly. So it's, it is good that I... Well, or Red's trying to do a Stone House strat. There was a Scholar. This tutor is because they have a Scholar. They're going to they're gonna tutor in Scholar. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I, I obviously fence here if I can. If I can't fence, I just finally take my Veg action. Oh, but yeah, Jock Jock's growing, of course. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I 100% I fence here. I keep one wood in reserve. The one wood is for sleeping corner. Next round, I try to take animals. I start player sleeping corner at some point. I take a veg. Um, I, I plow again. Plowing is fine, too. Uh, I may as well leave it possible to expand my house. I don't... I think it's highly unlikely I try to build another room. But it doesn't seem like there's any point in... Reducing my options. Uh, I want to pay. Yeah, I want to pay eight clay here. I want to keep the wood for a sleeping corner. All right. <sighs> things are things are good here. Got all of our fences. We got fields and crops. We have plenty of food. We have a sleeping corner for growth. We've only played one occupation, which is you know lame, but it's it's fine. But nothing else to do. Sleeping corner is going to be great. Again, I think this is just pretty clean win. I have a clay oven, a well, and a stone oven, which is like all the point ceilings in my hand, too. None of my opponents have built majors and stuff, which is part of their problem. Like, all my opponents, again, like, it, it's, it just seems like a classic, like, weaker player thing, but why just take more reedstone foods early, right? Like, it's very good. Okay, pair of cows is off the table, which is understandable. Animal dealer for red. That's their best feeding action by a lot. Just taking one cow is great, so. We hope Teal doesn't have any reason to start player here. Maybe Teal just builds a room and gets the next growth. That'd be welcome. That'd be fine. Just give me the boar. Let me take the boar. Excellent. Teal's day laboring. Uh... That's just what you that's what you love to see when somebody's very hungry. Uh they're just gonna take day labor. Uh anyhow, I take the pair of boar here then. This is very easy. Take take the best animal pair off the table. If I'm allowed to take sheep on the wheel, I will. I just don't expect it. Seems unlikely uh that the sheep could ever make it to me because Jock Jock would like the sheep and more importantly Teal just needs the sheep to eat. Oh yeah, the feeding the feeding from my opponents is just killing them. There's no food. And by there's no food, I mean I have plenty of food. Uh but they don't, so uh I probably just start player sleeping corner here and take a veg. Plow so would be great. Or well, maybe I just plow here, right? Do I just plow? Nah, I play sleeping corner and just stay start. 
Hard porcelain for red is meaningless, but being in a stone house, they're very they're playing scholar here. Jock Jock, I think, wants to sow all of his crops. Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. I might just plow then. There's a good amount of plow pressure that maybe it is just plow. I don't really need to start player. Well, I do need to play start player sleeping corner because my grain fields aren't going to exist in a second. So actually that's going to be an issue for me because I don't know when I'll be able to play sleeping corner next. So I should just get it out of the way. Um, I could just take single cow at the end of this round too. Like cow, veg, or plow are all good for me. Veg being the wild cow goes because steel's still so hungry. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to take single cow this game because my opponents have enough actions and they're hungry enough that they can't, like, pair of cows is just never going to happen. Um, it is Scholar for red, as expected. Uh, I'll take the veg here if I'm allowed to. I would be shocked if Jock Jock takes a veg. Jock Jock can buy veg off Lutonist, possibly. Jock Jock can whatever. I just take a veg. I do feel a bit bad for Jock Jock that I'm SP hogging here. I I don't need to be putting Jock Jock last, but I just have important miners to play. Oh, well, I guess to be fair, too, this is I mean this is a game too where I've never I only took start player here at the end. I played start player, Rand Clay and Sleeping Corner. I didn't have to start player for my growth, and I played shifting cultivation on growth like. Uh, start player is a bad action, right? And unless it's good, it, it occasionally becomes good when you're playing high quality miners or you're start player into strong stuff. Like, admittedly, I got a pair of boar partly too. I've just been staying start for a bit, and I have gotten value out of it. I, I oh, the veg does get taken by Jock Jock though, because Jock Jock's too hungry. Wow, that's unfortunate. I wanted the veg there just in case Plasso flips, but. Whatever, I also just get plow, which is a crazy good action. Like, the table still needs a lot of plows, too. I'm, I'm doing plenty good. I'm at 27. I'm well fed. I have guaranteed gross that take me to 33. I still have plenty of other clear points in taking sheep and taking cows and taking veg. Sowing more grain again. I'm going to be fine is the point. I'm like very clearly going to break 40. Teal with two beggars, complete non-threat. Red has no fields, no fences, three family members, has a scholar. But unless that scholar is dropping a plow driver, uh, even if even if it drops a plow driver, red's too far behind to you. It's just not a problem. Jock Jock has a huge house. Does have fields and crops. Uh, but Jock Jock's pretty far away from Reno parts. Jock Jock's pretty far away from... Breeding animals. But Jock Jock is going to get to grow to five. I have a lot of actions. So I, I, Jock Jock's actually probably my biggest threat. I mean, he's the second closest in points. He has the most actions. And he has the otherwise best farming, really. I mean, he has four fields and a bunch of crops. He has the ability to hold animals in his house, and he's gathering parts for fencing eventually. Yeah, I don't know. It could be okay. I mean, it's... I, again, I think this game's pretty clearly just won by me. Ooh, three-field rotation for Jock Jock. Okay, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good here. Jock Jock's game's coming together. All those plows make a bit more sense now. The early sack cart worked out well for him in getting the crops here, like... Jock Jack's figured out some stuff in these games. Still don't think he should have probably played Brushwood, although he was trying to build five rooms, so I guess he should have. Yeah, maybe it's fine. Teal still can build another room at some point. Forgot about that. I don't think that scares me either. There is a huge reed stack piling up. I mean, somebody should probably be MW. I really don't intend to take any more stone this game or build any more majors. I really just don't think I have time for it. But maybe I do. My game's kind of done, honestly. I mean, I need to take sheep. I need to take veg. I need to sow some crops. I need to take animals. But if growth flips, I have a lot of actions. Like, a lot of actions. So maybe it, maybe I will try to, like, take three stone and play lumber mill and play a major. Ooh, grocer for teal. So the upshot is grocer is very strong. The downside is... 
Teal really does not have the food for Grocer. There's no food in the game. Like, Teal's still on a fireplace, not even a hearth. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's just a little painful to watch, to be honest. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to take whatever flips here. If Plow So flips, I'm definitely just Plow So in. If uh, Grow flips, I'm just growing. Um, I'm not going to hand the round 12 action to anybody. Even though I can, even though I can grow with Sleeping Corner, there's nothing else on this board where it's like, ooh, I should take that instead of just blocking the grow from the table. In my opinion. I mean, if there was like a pair of cows, even if there was a pair of sheep, I might take those over growing, but there's not. So I I guess I could just plow first action again instead of growing, but I think I'm easily going to get one more plow this game, and that's all I need, so... There's really nothing on this board that's going to tempt me away from taking around 12 action. Then I probably do just take one cow. I take a veg. Um, yeah. But grow flips, so I just grow. Uh, I have a ton of actions this game then. Uh, because I get to grow here and I grow in 13. So yeah, maybe, maybe I do still try to take stone and drop down lumber mill and... Maybe I do take the reed stack at some point and build a BMW or something. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Red does have plow driver, so that's a lot. That's a lot better for red at least. Uh, red really needed fields from some sort of source like that. Although red is very red. Red is now trying to pay for scholar plow driver, so like red's very hungry again. Red, red kind of just wants like this cow is under threat just because people need it need it for food, but like again, my opponent's games are just really slowed down because they're so hungry. Um, I am gonna need a so bake action in the final round, probably is what it's likely to come to. Um, just to, uh, I'm gonna need a so bake one more time this game in order to feed fully is what it's gonna come to, but. Uh, anyhow, wood and clay are getting taken. That's totally fine. I don't. I'm gonna take. I do think I'm just gonna take the cow away and then take veg. I don't think red or like nobody should be taking veg. Grocer has veggies on it. Red already has quite a few veggies. Jock Jock has quite a few vegetables. So I think I can take cow and then take vegetable as the rest of this round. I also could take plow again. Plow did come to me, but I'm actually gonna I'm gonna say that the cow is a more of a priority um, than plowing. Like plowing's just not very important to me. That's three food action from Teal. Uh, again, everybody, you know that you're losing the game if you're taking three food actions consistently. Like you can't <laughs> you can't win games of Agricola. I be that hungry. This is kind of wild though. Like this happened in original a lot more often where everybody just kind of built fireplaces and was desperate to feed off of animals and stuff. Like I have not, we're going for a two point stable architect. No, I'm going to plow again. Eventually. It's just, I'm in no rush to do it. House steward for Jock Jock. That'd be, that's, that's a nice card. Jock Jock put together a solid game. Take the bench here. Just get that out of the way. Um, No, I don't plan to play Stable Architect. I eventually want to plow. I just don't think it's priority because, like, I might get plow so. Like, nobody's start playing. Anyhow, yeah, this game's wild. This is, like, closer to, like, old school Agricola where everybody was just fighting desperately for food. Um, like, you don't normally see this type of hunger anymore. Like, Revised has so many cards that throw food off, but, like, Nobody's even doing silly pitchfork stuff. Nobody's... I took all the ovens in the baking lines. Uh, none of them built guilds. None of them played cards that injected food to themselves. So two beggars for Teal. Yeah, that's how crazy this food game's been. Although Teal partly did that to himself. So Teal start playered in order to grow, skipping over three sheep, even though it was very clear that three sheep and two boar were going to get taken, in my opinion. And so, yeah, I mean, Teal really messed up. There's a wall builder. Wall builder did add food. That's true. Jock Jock's starting here. And Jock Jock's not starting for growth. So Jock Jock might be taking Plow So on me. 
So that's a slight bummer, but not a big one. Uh, I get two sheep then. I'm pretty happy with taking two sheep next round. I'm actually like quite happy about taking two sheep next round. Market stall for Jock Jock. Wow. Okay. Market stall is actually still... Actually, it's pretty bad for me, right? I don't really... Well, no, market stall is not terrible. If I start player market stall, it gets me another veg, and then I harvest another grain, and then I plow sow everything. The only issue is where does my food actually come from? So bake seems important. So bake's eventually important. I have enough food at the moment, but I do need so bake at some point this game. So yeah, I can just... I can eventually just take it to help make sure I feed. But I'm, I'm taking... Well, I'm taking cultivation if I'm offered it. Uh, I'll just cultivate. That's fine. Otherwise, I'm taking sheep here. Um, obviously, I'm not. I'm not gonna take growth this round because my sleeping corner allows me to grow. Uh, ooh, papermaker tutor for red. So red's well, red has no wood, <laughs> but all right, yeah, red. I don't know, whatever. Red's putting together something. Jock, 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 jock. Probably is plow sewing here. It looks pretty good. So if Jock Jock Plow sows, yeah, I just take the sheep. I mean, the sheep are very valuable here too. Jock Jock could open two boar, I guess. He has room in his house. Ooh, Jock Jock's opening the clay for Reno. Uh, okay, well, I think it's still got to be Plow Sow then, although I was starting to talk myself into these sheep. I don't think the sheep come back. Well, no, Teal should take the boar. Red should do anything, and then Jock, Jock Jock might take two sheep. Actually, somebody's going to grow, too. Jock Jock's trying to renovate, so Jock Jock also might take the reed stack. I might wheel the sheep. I'm going to take Plow Sow. It's really hard for uh, this crazy Plow Sow action to be wrong when you can plow a field and sow a ton of crops. Um... Now, it does kind of mean I need so bake next round, or it means I have to play Oven Fiery Boy next round. But, you know, if Oven Fiery Boy has to come out, that's fine. I can live with Oven Fiery Boy coming out. That's just a huge plow, so I mean, it took me up to 40 here already. I'm growing to 43, I'm breeding to 44, and I still have five, six more actions, like... Yeah, I, I just I have a crazy number of actions. Act, taking three stone and taking six reed and renovating to the BMW is also like a pretty hilariously good co sequence of actions. I don't really have time. Well, do I have time for it? The sheep do go here. So, I mean, how much pressure is there on three stone? Clay over plow so for Jock Jock. I mean, yeah, that's what he chose. Jock Jock wants to reno. Jock Jock can reno. The reno queue is kind of obnoxious, actually. I think I wheel three stone here, though. I guess Teal could still build a BMW in front of me. But the sheep got taken. I could just take the cow. The cow has two points again, too. But I'm kind of tempted by this crazy reed stone reno stuff. But maybe it's a distraction. I just am running out of points. So if you're running out of points, go get some points. I'm not going to get reno this round. Cow does get taken, which is pretty expected. So I guess I'm trying to take three stone here. And Oh, I can't reno BMW anyhow either, duh, because I wouldn't have enough. Huh. Maybe this maybe this was dumb. I take three stone here, and then I take reed stone food so that I can reno BMW next round and then still delay my growth. I don't know. Or I just take reed stone food and try to build BMW. And I skip the reno. That's also pretty good. I think I take Greenstone food here, and then I just build BMW, and then I don't even grow this round. 
just grow next round. Which is fine, because it makes the feeding trivial then. I don't even have to so bake again. That seems pretty good. Three stone gets taken by teal. I mean, <laughs> teal, the reno pressure is wild. Like, nobody's renovated when they're supposed to be. I could just grow here, though. Then build BMW next round. Ugh, I don't know. It, it also doesn't matter what I do. I've won this game, so, I mean, <laughs> there's that, too. Uh, okay, three stone gets taken, so everybody's trying to pressure. Uh, Teal could renovate to the BMW here and then eat some stuff off their grocery, so I think I do have to build the BMW. There were two three stone actions, yeah. Yeah, we possibly were renovated, but to be fair, renovating was also, like, there's... Tons of pressure on Renault. Like, I don't know what everybody's doing, so whatever. I'll just build BMW here, though, because somebody could BMW. So next round, I my food is pretty solved now. I have I have two grain I can eat. I can just eat some reed. Eating a reed here costs me a point, but it gets me three food. That's fine. Teal's building the joinery and is just accepting no fences. I mean, whatever. Again, I'm at 45. I breed to 46. I grow to 49. I take a sheep is 51, uh, whatever, you know, like, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly over 50 here this way, so I'm just going to do this and be happy. It's possible I just get plow sow again at the start of next round. That's a two-point action where I just plow a field and drop another veg. And then actually plant more grain, which makes my feeding and just eat more raw grain. And that's fine too. Um, again, I, I just have too many points and none of my opponents are particularly close. I mean, Jock Jock can reno fence for a lot of points. But is it enough? I mean, Jock Jock's reno is 5. It takes 26. And then a fence action is like 10. I mean, that's 36. Jock Jock should have a nice second here. I mean, he's played a solid game, but I I just this is this is one of those games where I I, I was probably just winning kind of regardless. Like a lot of my opponents are just kind of playing a little weak. Like these are the tables I've talked about where like I think it's really hard for me to possibly lose because it looks like it looks like basically forty or forty one points is going to be enough to win this game, and. I feel pretty confident I can score like 40 to 41 almost always. Even in games that go pretty awfully. Like, I should be able to score that much, so. Shout out to that game where one dude took 50 wood. That's true. I did win that game with like 45. Uh, that game was, that game was, that game was, that game was wild, but fun. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Anyhow, this has been a fun little morning agricola. I look forward to getting the win here and then I will go run off to the rest of my day. Uh, but yeah. All right. Uh, again, I, I'm gonna take plow sow here from allowed to. Although actually, I'm already fed. Once I grow, I need two more food, and I have two raw grain. But I'll plow sow anyhow because it's a point plus sowing the veg is a point, so it's a two point action. That's pretty much a lot better for others. Like teal would love to plow and sow their veg. Although <laughs> teal can't actually buy this grocery stuff off. Teal has no food for grocery in this big family. It's like it makes sense. Like I shouldn't constantly chuckle. I mean, it takes a while to learn how to how to eat well and how to not lose so much efficiency due to your feeding. I mean, that's kind of been everybody's. It's kind of been all my opponent's problem this game is figuring out how to eat efficiently enough to not cost them a ton of points. And it's really the one area, like, again, my game's been silky smooth with just eating off of eating off of ovens. Um, so, 
Childless is so good from a food perspective. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, any to be fair, any card that gives you a bunch of early grain is good from a food perspective, in my opinion. Like that's part of why I love Storehouse Keeper. If you get like, if you get like three early Storehouse Keeper activations in the first two round, first two stages, this is what you can do, right? Like, I got three early grain and three food, admittedly, from Childless. That part's true too. But I got three grain, and it turned into like my food for the whole game. Um. If you can play Storehouse Keeper and get a couple early Reedstone foods, that three grain can also like you should you potentially can leverage it if you invest it right and use your actions well. So it's part of why I love that card. I also just kind of do love baking strats when they work well. Um, okay, anyhow, what am I doing? Uh, I'm growing, and I don't have a lot of other ways to score. Uh, I guess I'm going to take this dumb sheep then because like sheep is my only other two point action and it's not clear it's going to come back to me uh, but yeah but yeah childless is great from food perspective this uh, again this is what I've been arguing though right like I didn't even take a veg with childless this game and I think it's just often correct like there's just so much strength to just having a ton of grain early getting some of it in the ground and some of it baked in an oven and then you can just take the veg later. It's fine. Like, you're not losing that much efficiency. Like, a bunch of grain early, I think, is just a lot better than having veggies early. Now, occasionally, that's not... Like, occasionally taking quite a bit of vegetables with Childless and just eating out of a hearth, that also can work. Um, but I, I do think... I do think part of the... Adva like, ways to make sure you're leveraging Childless is often to make sure you're plowing and then getting that stage two sow with Childless. It's just so strong to like multiply your crops and fields and solve your food at the same time. Like you get anytime you can get farming and food done like simultaneously, like right? That's like just two big parts of your game solved at once. So seasonal workers arguably better for feeding off a hearth. Yep. Yep, that also can work well. Uh anyhow, um, the cow got taken, so, like, I might take a vegetable here. Like, I'm really running out of points. Like, I could read stone food as a point, vegetable as a point, plow as a point. So I guess I plow? Yeah, I may as well plow. Uh, but I'm really down to one point actions besides grow. So that part's a little awkward. I did not plan my end game particularly well. But I guess this is why I BMW'd last round. Uh... Instead of BMW, I could have taken a cow, I guess, when it was two points. But it was probably right to BMW. I've really run out. Uh, Veg only enables one card in this set, so therefore grain's better. Yeah, that's a big... That's Yeah, I think that's the big prop. That's a good call. There, Once we do crazy things like Carrot Museum or, or even just get some cards like Schnapps Distiller and stuff where it makes feeding off of Veg extra efficient... There's just too many cards in this set that promote grain, such as Sleeping Corner and Threshing Board and Bread Paddle and stuff. Like, there's a lot of stuff that helps baking out. There's really nothing that helps encourage you to eat vegetables. So, uh, anyhow, I, I will take a vegetable here, and then I'll grow last action. Um, oh, I could so bake instead of taking the veg. Maybe that's better. Sure, I'll do that. Um, it doesn't really matter, but so bake is just more points or not more points, but it's more crops, more food. So none of those things actually matter, but so bake, if Teal actually found enough food to so bake off grocer, it's really a good action. So I'll block the best action, even though again, like I don't need to be blocking anybody but oh i even get to bake uh yeah i'm sure okay tons of food boom i have three extra grain i could eat raw so much extra food if only i could like sell some of it to teal for points like i have seven extra food now and seven food for teal lets them buy their grocer so it's like it's like seven food is like five points for teal or something wild. I would happily like sell seven food for two points. Teal would happily pay me two points for seven food. Let's let's get this deal done. 
That w- that is one of the more fun cards, in my opinion, from the gamer's deck. Uh, there's an occupation called Glutton. You play Glutton, and then it allows you at the end of the game to exchange three food for a point up to six times. So if you wind up with 18 extra food, uh, you can trade it all in for six points. It's kind of a fun little mini game to be able to try to produce that much extra food in a game. It doesn't work very often, but it's fun. Uh, but yeah, Traders of the Moor expansion, yeah. Trading in Agricola, I think, would just get obnoxious. I really don't encourage it, but um, it's sometimes funny to think about. Like, I have I have all this extra of a resource I just don't need, and Teal desperately needs food, like, really desperately, and just doesn't have it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. There's there's some cards in the other expansion stuff. Teal's playing Rift Baluster to get that Reno uh, in still. Uh, makes sense. Again, I passed them Rift Baluster. Uh, it turns out that uh, passing Carpenter's Parlor Rift Baluster probably should be scary, but Teal just never wound up figuring out a way to feed, and it just totally, totally killed their ability to accelerate. Uh now, with that said, Grocer requires a lot of food. Roof Baluster requires a bit of extra food. And Adoptive Parents is very aggressive because it also means you need a bunch of food. So I think Teal's partly messed up by playing... Ad- well, Teal definitely messed up by playing Adoptive Parents. Teal played Adoptive Parents instead of just double building, and then Growth flipped in six. So the action where Teal played Adoptive Parents, Teal was supposed to just build rooms because then they would have just got to grow in round six... Instead, Teal got to grow in round seven. Now they got to grow in round seven with Adoptive, but they they did not. They never had the food to make Adoptive parents good. Uh, in fact, they they got no benefit from Adoptive until that final growth that I gave them in round thirteen. They they did you know they netted food. They they netted something then finally, but Adoptive parents was really bad for Teal, and it's partly because yeah they never had food so. Uh, Jock Jock does put up like a 41 or a 42 this game. That's nice. He he played a solid game. He played a lot of cards and had fun and did well. But uh, I mean, obviously just had a real slick game. Um, again, this signed me up for tables like this and I just, I'm very unlikely to lose. Like if, 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 if all I have to do is score about a 40 something in order to win, like low 40s is enough to win. It's usually going to work. Uh, delaying your first growth for adoptive parents always has to be wrong. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, that's like... I, Teal doesn't know that growth is going to flip, but Teal was definitely supposed to just double build in round five. After, Like, they start playing Carpenter's Parlor, they double build, they get the first growth instead of me. It's just a huge shift. They never play adoptive parents. Like, it's just way better. I would never try to play adoptive parents with this hand. Like, yeah, you're going to grow three times because you have Carpenter's Parlor. But the hardest thing with Carpenter's Parlor is already usually that you don't have enough food because you're trying to accelerate so fast. And then you're trying to pay a grocer and a roof baluster with your game plan. Like, there's never going to be enough food for this game plan, in my opinion. Like, you can't you can't play adoptive grocer and roof baluster and then finally build a fireplace in like round nine or something like there, there there was there was no hope for that ever working out for them um and, and, and look that's i mean that's what i mean you, you play the game and you eventually learn some of these things and you figure out how to navigate stuff uh Teal learned to pursue growth and they pursued growth uh and again the other critical problem is that they got Teal did get their second family growth and they grew to four at the end of round nine. That's normally good, but it cost them beggars because they didn't take the sheep that they had to. Um, So yeah. Didn't do a lot there for me, but it shouldn't have really. I mean, yeah, as I've been arguing, that was a pretty slick game. Four, 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 three. Love to see all that. Just good points. And then I'll say I just 12, 12 improvements. I got the well... The clay oven, the stone oven, and the BMW. I mean, this is also pretty silly. Like, my opponents probably should have found some more time, you know, to take reedstone food and build majors. But my opponents really, like, just never took reedstone food. And then they finally, at the end, built a pottery and joinery. But came pretty late. 
maybe a 4 a.m. stream to try to get into a game with Rage Let. Yeah, I, I could try to wake up real early tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be fun someday. Uh, but yeah, five point tutor for Red is fun. I mean, tutor when you know you're. It makes a little more sense now to me that Red played tutor, but still don't open tutor first action of the game. Red definitely should have opened Reedstone food this game and just kept taking Reedstone foods in order to make sure that they could plow or, uh, scholar plow driver sooner, and then they still could have got tutor out. It would have been fine uh, to just play Tutor quite a bit later. But the general idea of Red's game is pretty good here. Like, this this collection of Ox is pretty solid to play Tutor Scholar and then play all these Ox, you know, late, mid-game. Like, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was just a slick win. Uh, you can kind of tell this was a slick, easy win that went plan A, because normally when I'm streaming, it's not 17 minutes of thinking time for me. It's a little bit because my opponents are a bit slow, but it was also just because I basically got to execute plan A the whole time and didn't have to uh, talk through or discuss uh, difficult, tricky points. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to peek at the draft real fast, and then I'm going to go head off uh, and do some other things. But uh, I am just curious uh, what this player was looking at originally. I mean, they first picked Grocer, right? Yeah, so they first picked Grocer, which is great. But then what, what do they take here? Butter Churn? Okay. I mean, Butter Churn is solid if you could actually get enough animals. And then you definitely take Roof Ballister Carpenter's Parlor. Yep, that's... I'm just curious if they could have found any food. Not finding a milk jug is actually kind of brutal. So this is where I take Storehouse Keeper if I'm... I probably take Storehouse Keeper here. Storehouse Keeper could be a lot of food with a baking plan here. Alternatively, Mushroom Collector is actually totally fine. I think they take Hand Plow. I would take Strawberry Patch. With Grocer, I love Strawberry Patch. While well, they take Groom, so this was very wrong. Uh, I mean, I, I guess they're taking Groom because they're trying to block the combo or something. Although they don't even know about the combo because it's a first pick plow driver. Groom is just really wrong. And then adoptive parents is also pretty wrong here. Like you just don't have food. Like you have so much food costs. So I think this is a little bit of a draft lesson too. Like this draft's a little gross, but uh, childless, my witches of Agricola. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of true too. Childless is kind of just one of my favorite styles. Like, it allows, like, Childless is perfect. It allows me to build the first room and try to just get the early growth. I love just doing that anyhow. It allows me to only really play one Oc. That's great. I don't really touch most of my other Ocs anyhow. It allows me to plow fields and bake a bunch early. I love doing that. I love just having slick, easy feeding. It's great. It makes me happy. So, yeah, it's it really is kind of just everything I just, I just love. Um, green Grocer, when you have Grocer's, pretty awful but i mean all these cards kind of suck so whatever at this point yeah i'm done well they do have brook i actually wonder if they were supposed to try to find a time for to play brook um their food was just so bad like they needed food so bad uh i'm gonna just peek this was first pick plow driver yeah plow driver and then they actually did wheel the scholar even that's pretty it's pretty awesome that's what you dream of. I mean, this pack is strong enough. You take Plow Driver. Somebody took House Steward. I decided to go Conservator instead of Scholar. Somebody goes Small Scale. Somebody goes Adoptive even over all that. So yeah, that's all that. And then finally, Jack Jack. Uh, Jack Jack's opening pick. Well, so Jock Jock first picks a Brushwood Collector, I think. So that's just wrong. Jock Jock also passes Rammed Clay for a Moldborn Plow. I also think that's wrong. So I also probably got lucky here because, uh, yeah, I would not have drafted like that. I would have probably taken Conjure first or something, but I guess Brushwood pays off once you see a house steward. But, yeah, I don't think Jock Jock picked the cleanest there, and I benefited from that a little bit because Rammed Clay is so flexible and so good, and that definitely helped me, but oh well. Uh, okay. Anyhow, uh, you think you're more successful with Childless than Assisted Tiller. Assisted Tiller often leads to you just doing the wrong stuff since it's too flexible. Yeah, I mean, look, that's kind of fair too. I, I get that. Like, Childless does kind of force you down like precisely one thing, and it kind of tells you what to do. So on that front, it is kind of boring because you are kind of just executing some 
Uh, there's some the, the stuff opens up a lot of the mid game with childless, but I agree the early game childless is kind of formulaic. Um, assistant tiller is pretty tricky because like you can do a lot of things with it. Um, I think if you're playing assistant tiller early, you have to have a crop source also, and you're actually going to leverage the fields early. Otherwise, I think assistant tiller. Yeah, I think the strongest thing about assistant tiller is that you like rush your way to four family members, then play assistant tiller and use it through the mate and late in mid game in order to get all your fields with your fourth family members action you know you get to take two food in a field which is great because normally plow is blocked and wood is blocked and otherwise you're debating between taking like two wood or i don't know what right like that's that's when assistant tiller gets real strong is when you get to take that fourth family member and put them on something really good uh, but it can be hard to get in those positions. So yeah. Anyhow, uh, this is a fun little thing. Thanks for hanging out and chatting team. It was good times. Uh, thanks all for whoever's watching it later on the VOD and stuff. This was just a pretty clean win at a table that wasn't particularly strong. Uh, again, uh, again, if, if, if my, if, if my, uh, if all I have to do is score 42 in order to win, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, oh yeah. Finally, let's look at some stats. I didn't quite take the most actions this game, but uh, the player that took the most actions begged because they took all those actions. I didn't really get any crazy grabs this game, right? I got a six clay grab. That part that part was good. But otherwise, it was four clay, four clay, six clay. And then all the wood I took was probably like three wood, three wood, four wood, four wood. So actually, I mean, that's, that's very efficient gathering of these resources. That's four wood actions, three clay actions. I mean, that's that's pretty damn good. I had nine stone. Uh, nine stone is wild, but yeah, I took I took three reed stone food actions and two three stone actions, and then got to turn all that stone into the stone oven, the well, the BMW, the clay oven. It's pretty good. Pretty damn good. I didn't get great animal grabs this game, but. There was hardly any great animal grabs to be had this game. And then, yeah, I got three. I got three food, three grain, uh, from childless, and uh, that's yeah. That's I mean, I really didn't play many. Whoops. I, yeah, I don't want to watch replay, but I played very few cards. Right, I just played childless. Um, childless is like all that I needed to leverage my way to a fifty-two. Uh, and otherwise, I just played the family game essentially. I mean, rammed clay, leveraged rammed clay a lot, and then sleeping corner. I mean, a couple of miners that did a lot of work too, but... Oh, well, that's what happens. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, uh, Childless and Big Country in that sense are two of the best single card game plans. Yeah, I mean, this loops a little bit back to what NerdCube was playing, and we were all talking about like how to try to provide him strategy help. NerdCube was all like, oh, I know what to do when I get those cards. I'm like, well, yeah, but the real... like. That's where this set's actually a little annoying, because there's a couple cards that lead you to do like very different things that aren't like necessarily typical Agricola and they're very strong and learning how to do them is like useful because you can win some games, but the heart of Agricola is all the other stuff. Like learning how to leverage Grocer and Assistant Tiller and that stuff, like that's what should make you a really good Agricola player. Like those is what you need to do. That's what you need to master. Like you don't need to master how to run Childless or how to run big country like those are like little sub games and it's fun but yeah the heart of agricola is just understanding how to take the best action on the board when to build what to leverage how to push and pressure stuff how to navigate certain resources you know being at different levels when to focus on this when to focus on that like and all that's a lot harder to be fair so but yeah anyhow uh I've blabbed a lot, and as usual, viewers drop off at the end of these things while I'm blabbing and not, you know, actually playing a game. So I truly will head off. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, thanks, Strange. I will see you all around later, everybody. Bye.